Let's call it from a federal prison. I got 20 years for money laundering. I got 10 years for obstruction of justice. I got five years for the machine gun. I got 10 years for a firearm they found in Los Angeles. They sentenced me to seven life sentences for drugs. Could you imagine me and El Chapo have the same drug charge? Todd Kaminsky created this case. He created an atmosphere for these guys to want to set me up. These guys believed that if I got arrested, that their problem would be over. They force-fed these people evidence that wasn't validated by anything. Their freedom all hinged on how they performed on that stand against me. These guys are all home with their family and enjoying the fruits of their drug proceeds. I have nothing except these guys' testimony. I was always going to be the fall guy. I've represented some people that the government would move mountains to convict. The stuff that happened in Jimmy Rosemont's case was by far the worst. Todd Kaminsky, his agenda from the very beginning was to infiltrate hip hop as a whole. Find the scapegoat, put them on the stake. Off of a big conviction, he can end up with a big office. He was shadowing their investigation every one of them uh, came back with the same thing. This Todd Kaminsky's crazy. He's fast and loose with the facts. All he wants is Jimmy and Jimmy this, Jimmy that. He really seen me as a perfect witness against Jimmy. Because I was charged with a King Thing charge, a lot of kilos, and he tried to infiltrate him and I was dealing with him, but it was nothing of that sort. Everything that I was doing was with the music industry, with Jimmy. You have young, highly ambitious prosecutors who simply want a conviction. Said I could help you go home with the time that I had left. 18 years. Todd Kaminsky didn't even try this particular case in court. He did the legwork. That conviction landed on his record. He got the gold star and moved on to become an assemblyman somewhere. With Jimmy's case, I had personal knowledge of what the witnesses were saying. Witnesses in that case not only lied, but the government knew that they lied. All of the money and the drugs that they had in the courtroom, none of that belonged to me. But because of the testimony, they put it on me. Clearly you couldn't reach a conclusion as to Jim's guilt or innocence based on anything other than the cooperator testimony. Talk about an unholy triumvirate of disgusting, slimy, scumbag witnesses. You got a guy like Henry Butler, whose wife was arrested with machine guns, pills, heroin, cash, weed, and cocaine. So I love my wife when I love anybody, so whatever I have to deal with to get her off at the end of the day, that's what I have to do. These were the tools they used to make Henry Butler say that he sold me hundreds of kilos. I asked him, why is you doing this? He just told me. Man, they gave me an offer, they're gonna send me and my wife home, why don't you do it? And I saw Tony Martin and Tess, they pretty much told me the same situation. These people have a motive to slant their testimony. Henry Butler ain't a stupid guy. He says, I should have been the kingpin. But they wanted Jimmy so bad, he became the kingpin. And honestly, if I were to do what I did, I would have been the kingpin in this case because I was in L.A. And I was the people who was really selling everybody's drugs. The play was, when you get up there and I ask you a question, you say it's Jimmy. Teff was working for the government. It couldn't be more obvious that he was trying to get me to say something on tape that would get me disqualified. You're sending people in to get a lawyer indicted? Jeff Reed Lickman would have beat the shit out of this guy if they would have allowed me to have him as my contract. I've been down this road before with high profile clients. I know how to win these cases. Lickman knew the case knew what the government was trying to do. He knew the players that were testifying against me. 
I never thought for a second that we would lose that trial. It was strategic on the prosecutor's part to knock Lichtman off of the case. They completely lied about the meeting with Henry Butler. Even though I left of my own volition, I was disqualified. Finally, the prosecutor says, look, of course you didn't promise to give him money to help him hire a lawyer, but we know that if you're Jimmy's lawyer, he's never going to plead guilty. He's going to fight the case to trial. And we had to get rid of him. And I remember thinking, like, this is America? I never stated that I didn't do anything. Like, I'm totally innocent. I just wasn't guilty for what they charged me for. Just because you commit one act, you know, a legend indictment doesn't mean you're guilty of everything. They tried to portray him as some kind of boss or overseer of this business that he was responsible for paying people and hiring people and that just wasn't the case. Everyone was on the same level. He doesn't deserve a CCE charge. You can convict Jimmy Rosemond honestly and fairly and legally, or you can cut corners, you can lie, you can rely on, upon people that are committing perjury. That's what they did. To them, the ends justified the means, and whatever they had to do to get Jimmy Rosemond, they were going to do. What mattered to them was getting this guy, getting him his life conviction, and they did.